All right, here we are. Uh, I want to have a quick video showing the difference between factoring and finding zeros. They're very, very closely related in terms of the math required, uh, but they have very different conclusions. And so I got two examples up here. We're going to start with a, uh, a quadratic over here of degree two, your classic parabola. And when you factor something like this, most people are, are pretty comfortable um, finding two numbers that add to negative 6 and multiply to a negative 27. Uh, many people think of the factors for 27. Um, one that comes to mind is 9 times 3. And then using the right combination of, of pluses and minuses, you can go into the factored version of this, which in this case would be x minus 9 x plus 3. Uh, if you multiply this out, you could confirm pretty quickly. You know, checking my work, I have a 9x uh, plus a 3x minus 27, and that mathematically is equivalent to the original uh, expression. This right here is factored form. You know, if the question said, factor this the following um, we would be done but sometimes the question asks us to find the zeros or specifically um, use factoring to find the zeros and so when it says that what it's really asking is well when is this function equal to zero and if this function factored is this the question's really asking, well, when are these factors equal to zero? You know, hence the expression find the zeros. And the reason it's nice to even learn how to factor or have it in factored form is the only way a product is equal to zero is if one of the uh, factors is equal to zero because, you know, zero times anything is equal to zero. And so that last step here is to set each factor equal to zero and uh, solve for x. Isolate your variable, we get x equals 9, and if we subtract 3 over here, we get x equals negative 3. Um, if you're asked to find the zeros, you know, here, find the zeros, um, the zeros for this uh, example would be 9 and negative 3. Uh, but the factored form, which we use to find the zeros, is written in parentheses. And so again, uh, you're probably sick of it by now, but this is factored form up here, and this is like uh, the solved version to find the zeros. Um, as you go further into math, the advantage to knowing how to find the zeros is... If you think about your x and your y axis, you know, 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. When x is equal to 9, you know, this point 9, 0, and x is equal to negative 3, you know, negative 3, uh, negative 3, 0. If you were to graph this uh, original quadratic, it would hit zero, hence find the zeros. It would pass through the x-axis at negative three and positive nine. You'd have some, some graph or something, parabola going up. So that's the visual for it. Okay, over here, I'm gonna do the same type of question uh, and try to factor this cubic and then find the zeros. Another little side note is uh, the number of zeros cannot exceed the degree of the polynomial. And many times the number of zeros is equal to that. Uh, it always is equal to that if you count repetitions and so. Okay, let's quickly go through this. Uh, it's not quite as straightforward as, as the quadratic over here. When you have a cubic, we need to uh, test some factors. And if it is factorable, then those factors are going to be uh, factors of the last term, in this case 12, 
you know, we can consider, uh, you know, one, two, uh, three, four, six, and twelve. And then technically, when you have a coefficient, we might actually find uh, some other factors in here uh, that are combinations of these factors over the factors of two, meaning we could have, you know, one over one, one over two, uh, two over one, um, two over two, three over one, three over two. Uh, it gets a little bit crazy over here, but hopefully we can find a nice one, and then we'll be left with a quadratic where we can find the other two. So uh, let's just dive in here real quick. Uh, we're going to test some factors using um, synthetic division. So again, I'm using the coefficients 2, 9, 1, and negative 12 here. And with synthetic division, 1 times 2 is 2. Add them together. 11 plus 1 is 12. 1 times 12, we got really lucky. Uh, if we get a remainder of, of 0 here, it tells us that this is, in fact, a 0. So if I kind of uh, keep this tally down here, one of my zeros is, in fact, the number 1. Um, what's left over, 2x squared plus 11x plus 12, this can help us find the other two zeros. Right, this problem is very similar to the one that we did over here. All right, let me kind of rewrite our conclusion because this was uh, this can be confusing. Um, we found that one of the zeros is one, but one as a factor is represented as x minus one. Kind of have this case of the opposites going. Uh, when is this equal to zero? Well, it's equal to zero when x is. 1. And so this difference is, is the most important part of this video. The factored version versus the 0, you have an x minus 1, you have a positive 1. Um, what's left over is 2x squared plus 11x plus 12. If we want to factor this, we can keep what we have but we're going to try to break this down into two more factors. Again, why do I think there's two more factors? Because that's a 2. So there's all, way, uh, all sorts of ways to factor this. I'll try to just kind of go through the quickest way. I know that 2x squared has to be uh, 2x times x. Um, some people like this modified uh, diamond or graphic organizer or something where you do uh, 2 times 12 to get 24. You throw an 11 right here, uh, you throw a 2x, you throw a 2x. You don't need to do this if you have your own factoring techniques. But the idea is if, uh, if you can come up with two numbers that multiply to 24 and add to 11, you can come up with your other factors. You have a 2x plus 3, and then this represents an x plus 4. If the question asked us to uh, factor this, this is the answer for the factored version. I have one, two, three factors, which is what I expected. But if you're asked for the zeros, you can take each one of these, or you can take this entire factored version, and when you set it equal to zero, it's the same as taking each piece and setting it equal to zero. Oh, I forgot my zero here. And when you solve for x, we should get three answers. Add one, I get x equals one, that's the one I had down here. Uh, subtract three and divide by two, I get negative three halves, that kind of popped up up here. Uh, negative three halves. And then the last one, it looks like, uh, would be negative 4. 
So again, uh, last call on this is the factored version of my cubic is right here. If your uh, teacher, professor, whoever said factor this, boom, you'd be done. But if it's if the question is asked to find the zeros, you got to think about what uh, each one of these factors would be if you set them equal to zero and you have these three numbers. Um, 30 more seconds. If you were to graph this cubic, you know, wh whatever it was, I don't want to scroll back up. Um, you might have a graph that looks, you know, something like this. And the idea here is uh, this graph is not drawn to scale. But these three zeros is where the cubic would hit zero. You know, it hit at negative four, it hit at negative three halves, and hit at one. Uh, and that's it. Hope you enjoyed the video.